Okay, so here's a video with better audio about anti -Sivian poly the anti-Sivian polygon of a, of a regular pentagon. Okay, so start with a regular pentagon, this blue uh, uh, polygon here. Its vertices are P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. I can also consider a point X that I can place anywhere on the plane of this regular uh, polygon. For now, ignore uh, these numbers being reported up here. And I'm going to draw... Uh, Sivians through X from each one of these points. So look at the five Sivians. What is a Sivian? It's basically a line connecting a vertex PI through this chosen point X, right? So I can vary X and track uh, the five Sivians. In this case, I'm also going to track the intersections of each one of these Sivians with the corresponding opposite side. So the side opposite to P1 is P3, P4. That uh, gives rise to a first intersection C1. Uh, let's move back a little bit here. The side opposite to P2 is P4, P5, and that Sivian gives rise to a second intersection, C2, and so forth and so on. It turns out that uh, if we connect these uh, five intersections, we can call that new polygon, the Sivian polygon uh, with respect to X. Okay, and this guy is actually pretty well behaved. Uh, yeah, it looks like it can be self-intersected. I haven't studied it much. This is not the subject of this particular video we could study this one certainly as well okay it looks like if i go through a vertex this thing is going to explode obviously but if i don't go through a vertex uh as far as i can tell the cvn polygon is not going to do anything too funny okay it can be self-intersected and then up here i'm reporting its area which is the signed area in case this guy is self-intersected so here's a sign there okay the area of the cvn Okay, now the subject that is really germane to this uh, video is uh, how do we compute the anti sivian of the reference blue uh, pentagon? So the anti sivian of the blue pentagon would be a polygon that uh, has the blue polygon as its sivian. So what would this thing look like? Let's draw it. Here's, let's, let's place X a little bit um, closer to the center. So here's a sample position of X. Uh, and here's a sample anti sivian of the blue polygon. Its vertices now are labeled Q1 opposite to P1, Q2 opposite to P2, and so forth and so on. Notice how the vertices of both the sivian and the anti sivian, uh, they both lie on the sivians through X from the original PIs, right? So if I move this pair around, they're both going to lie on the sivian. So the, the vertices of the anti sivian polygon are constrained to be on the original Sivians. Okay? However, to obtain them, I cannot use such a direct approach as I use for the Sivian. To think about the construction for the Sivian, I get a vertex of the original polygon, I run a line through X, and, I, and then I intersect that with the op opposing side, and I have a vertex of the Sivian. No such algorithm, direct algorithm, can be done for the anti-Sivian. And the reason is the anti-Sivian is kind of... Uh, I, you know, I, I will go as far as to call it a, an external billiard kind of trajectory in the sense that if you start from, let's say, a candidate point Q1 here, okay, for you to have a valid anti sivian you're going to have to go around the blue polygon in which way? You're going to wrap around it in which way? You're going to start from Q1 and draw a line through P4. That line is going to intersect this sivian P2X somewhere. And then you're going to go through P5, intersect the next Sivian, and so forth and so on. So you're going to do this uh, wraparound algorithm. You're going to hope that when you get to Q6, not shown here, Q6 is going to coincide with Q1. Okay, so this wraparound, the sort of final uh, condition where Q6 intersects or coincides with Q1, is the condition that you must solve to obtain the anti Sivian. And that requires a composition of projectivities. This algorithm was suggested to us by uh, Arsenia Copian, and it was implemented in Mathematica by Holm, my Mark Hellman uh, using symbolic math. And I finally committed that to uh, uh, interactive code, and that's what we're looking at here. But it's this concatenation of five projectivities and then a condition in the end that says Q6 equals to Q1. We're going to document this algorithm elsewhere. Okay, now there's some really interesting properties. Let me turn off the Sivian for now. Um, so you're going to notice here, let me turn off the Sivian polygon as well. You're going to notice that as I move X, 
okay, and I'm getting this family of anti -Syrians. there are some uh, areas that X is going to cross, or some curves that X is going to cross, that are going to cause the vertices of the anti sivian to go through infinity. For example, here Q4 is going to the northeast, and at some point it just blows up and comes back on the other side, right? So I'm moving northeast with X, and I come back on the other side, okay? And notice that the anti sivian can be self-intersecting, okay? I don't have a lot of mouse precision here, but let me see if I can find a position. Uh, where I can show you guys an self-intersecting uh, position of the anti -Sivian. So X is in a region here whereby Q4 has flipped through infinity to uh, the lower left of the picture over here, and now this anti sivian guy is self-intersecting. I'm reporting its area. This is the signed area of the anti sivian and I'm also reporting the ratios of areas here and the product of sivian to anti sivian areas just to see if there were any interesting things. We haven't really... Uh, delved uh, deeply into this part here, see if there are invariants or ISO curves uh, where these areas and ratios and products are constant. Okay, but one thing we did do which is pretty interesting is we have a visualization of the curves uh, where uh, you transition uh, from, uh, from a finite area um, anti sivian into an infinite area anti sivian and then back to a finite one. So uh, these are the so-called explosion lines. Okay, so let's bring X back to the center cell here. Uh, we have pairs here, so there's a first branch here that looks like a hyperbolic branch, and a second corresponding hyperbolic branch here, pseudo-hyperbolic branch. Okay, notice that these branches, each one of these branches is going through the midpoint of a side. Okay, so they're going through a midpoint. So the original branch here also goes through a midpoint, and it goes around, and it goes through a secondary midpoint. Notice also that I can replicate these two branches five times, so insert four more copies of them, with each one of these copies rotated to pi over five. And then you get this web. Now the interesting thing is, <clears throat> uh, if I am within one of these cells and I don't cross any of those curves, the vertices of my anti sieve and they stay well behaved, and I don't have those crossings through infinity. So if I'm in the center web here, and it looks like as long as I'm on the center cell, okay, uh, my anti sivian is never self-intersected. So that's an interesting equivalence class here. Now if I cross, let's cross this first one here. As we approach it, you're going to notice that Q4 and up on the northeast is going to shoot off to infinity, as we saw before. It's going to be at infinity when X is on that curve, and then it comes back through the other side. Okay, so it comes back through the other side. And then I, I have this sort of equivalent cla equivalence class here where the area of my anti sivian polygon does not blow up. But it, you can see that it can assume two topologies. It can be self-intersected within the cell, as we're seeing right now, or it can be simple, as we're seeing right now. Concave. Uh, is there a convex shape in here? Perhaps here I only have these two situations where it's either concave, like so, or self-intersected, like so. That's interesting in it of itself. Let's go to this other cell here. Let's see what happens here. So now it looks like it can be concave, but it can never be self-intersected within the cell. And it's finite as well. Okay, so we explore the center one, this one over here, this one, or let's go to this one over here. So this is kind of like an infinite asymptotic cell. It looks like uh, my anti sivian is, uh, well, can we characterize that? We'd have to study that. But I think I've seen it as being self-intersected, like so. It's self-intersected there, right? And it looks like as long as I, well, as long as I'm in the exterior, this guy's going to be self-intersected. If I cross over to the interior, I might go back to being intersected. So I don't know exactly what kind of a class of polygons I'm going to be on this cell. Then we have this other unbounded cell as well. And now you we can see that the polygon can get quite small here. It can get quite small. And as I move out or in, I go from self-intersected to non-self-intersected. So that's pretty nice. So I cannot be... Uh, oh, I can be non-self-intersected here, but concave. I'm also self-intersected. Now I'm convex. So yeah, I go through many different changes here. So it looks like... Uh, so, you know, guys, these, these orange curves, they're just uh, demarcating uh, those positions of X where one, one or more of the vertices of the anti sivian go to infinity. But they're not demarcating, let's call them the topological equivalence classes, self-intersected, not self-intersected, concave, 
uh, uh, convex. Uh, so we probably need another set of, uh, of lines for that. Okay, so we can explore that. In fact, you guys can explore this yourselves. You can go to this um, uh, address here, bit.ly, and it's 3, then lowercase o, capital K, capital U, capital V, lowercase f, number 5, and you can go to this bit.ly address, and I've published this thing as a Mathematica uh, application. It's not as fast as interactive as this one, but you're going to have the same functionality. Okay. Another thing that we can see here is that these explosion lines, uh, they tend, they, they have uh, certain uh, remarkable or notable intersections, right? So uh, these two branches here are intersecting on this chord between P1 and P3, and then these other two branches are intersecting there as well, and then these other two branches are intersecting here. So we get this sort of symmetric pattern with respect to this uh, inner pentagram of chords. Uh, uh, you can see here that they intersect here and here as well. And then, as we said before, uh, some of these branches intersect the midpoints. All of the branches intersect uh, corresponding or uh, 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 midpoints corresponding to that particular branch. So this branch here, for example, intersects this one and that one, and this one intersects. So each branch intersects uh, two side midpoints. So there's a lot of richness here. There's a lot of richness to both the anti-Sevian and the Sevian polygon, okay? I don't believe the Sevian is sensitive. The area of the Sevian is uh, sensitive to these orange uh, lines here, these crossovers, but the anti-Sevian certainly is, okay? There's a lot that can be studied between these two polygons. There, you can see here that we were actually drawing the ratio of their areas and the product of their areas, so we could ask the question, you know, what is the locus of X such that either the ratio or the product is constant? We could study those curves. We could study the curves where the area of either the Sevian or the anti-Sevian are constant. We can even study curves or loci of, or the locus of X for which the area of the anti-Sevian is zero, right? So when you go into a self-intersecting configuration, uh, for example, let's find one. Here's a self-intersecting configuration. Uh, so there's going to be points within the cell here where the signed area of that green polygon is zero, right? Let's turn off the, the Sevian polygon. So there's going to be some locus of X, I believe. Yeah, so there's there's a locus here somewhere. So, you know, over here, there might be something close to this position where the area of that green polygon is zero. Wherever you can get self-intersecting polygons, okay, uh, that can certainly be the case. So here as well, there might be something, you know, anti sevian is self-intersecting here. So there might be something close to this position where that area is zero. So the question we might ask is, what's the locus of X such that the area of the anti sevian or of the sevian or some other quantity is equal to zero? Okay. So I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to check it out at this particular bit.ly. Um, I don't know if you guys caught it before, but at this particular bit.ly over here.